everybody! Welcome to our channel, Living in Richmond, Virginia, where we show you exactly what it's like to live, work, eat, and play right here in RVA. We have tons of people reaching out to us about Richmond relocation, and sometimes our job is to tell people what they're looking for doesn't exist here. <laughs> it's all about setting the right expectations. So in this video, we're going to give you 14 reasons why Richmond might not be a good fit for you. This isn't going to be one of those videos where I disguise a positive attribute as a con, like in a job interview, <laughs> and I say a weakness, but it's really a strength. Like, if you don't like beer, definitely don't move to RVA. No, there will be none of that today. So be sure to watch the whole video to hear all the real reasons why Richmond might not be what you're looking for. If this is your first time to our channel, welcome. I'm Taylor Jefferson. And I'm Sarah Jefferson. And we own and operate Jefferson Grove Real Estate. We have helped tons of families relocate to Richmond. And if you're thinking about doing the same, be sure to download our free Richmond Relocation Guide. It's full of useful information all about Richmond and the surrounding areas. The link is in the comments below and on our banner image. If you haven't done so already, you have to subscribe to our channel because every week we'll be posting new videos all about living in Richmond, including more neighborhood tours, fun things to do in RVA, and lots more coming up. We are the unsales people. We are very protective of our buyers and we usually talk people out of buying a home because we don't want you to make a mistake just so we can have a sale. When it comes to relocating to Richmond, we do our best to have the hard conversations up front, such as your budget isn't going to get you what you want or what you're looking for doesn't exist. You could have a million dollar budget, but we can't get you a beachfront home in Richmond. We don't want you to waste your time looking in the wrong place. So this video will definitely give you a better idea of what you'll find here and what you won't find here in Richmond. First, let's talk about cost of living and having a realistic budget for a home when you move here. While Richmond is more affordable than many other major metro cities along the East Coast, if you're moving from a cheaper cost of living area to Richmond, there'll probably be some sticker shock. As of the making of this video, the average home price in RVA is $367,000. If your budget's on the lower end, be sure to check out our videos about affordable neighborhoods in different areas around Richmond. So let's say your budget is $300,000. Well, on average, that will buy you a 1,700 square foot, three bedroom home with a year built of around 1984. So ultimately what I'm saying is just don't expect to find large, updated homes for cheap here. If you want to be in a neighborhood without an HOA, I have more bad news for you. HOAs are very common in Richmond. Looking at all of the homes that have sold in the past 180 days within 20 miles of Richmond, 35% of them had an HOA. Now, if I target the more suburban areas that we cover in our videos, like Short Pump, Glen Allen, or Midlothian, then 56% of the neighborhoods had an HOA. It is usually the older neighborhoods that don't have one, so if you want newer construction and no HOA, your options will be few and far between. If you want a nice large yard within the suburbs, you might be disappointed in what you'll find. Only 18% of houses that have sold within a 15 mile radius around Richmond have had a yard size of a half an acre or more. And of those homes, only 36% were $500,000 or less. Now, if you're willing to go further out, then your odds of finding a larger yard increase as 46% of the homes sold that are between 20 and 30 miles outside of Richmond had half an acre or more. And over half of those were under 500,000. So if you want a large yard, you will either pay the price with distance or with money. We have had people reach out to us and say that they're moving to Richmond and they want water views from their home. While it is possible to find, we obviously aren't a beachfront city. The largest bodies of water within Richmond are the James River, the Swift Creek Reservoir, and Lake Cheston. There are other small lakes and ponds that might satisfy your desire for a water view, but here's the kicker. Within a 25 mile radius, only about 4.5% of homes were listed as waterfront. And I say it with quotations because if there was a puddle in the backyard, you know a realtor would say that's waterfront. Of all the waterfront homes, fake or not, almost half of them cost over $500,000. This may sound like a foreign concept to you depending on where you're coming from, but not every area of Richmond has high-speed internet. Predominantly, this is more of a problem for the rural areas, but it's not something to take for granted. You might be surprised by some of the locations which aren't too far away from Richmond that don't have a true high-speed internet provider like Comcast or Verizon. So depending on where you want to be, and what you're looking for, you might not get high-speed internet, and that's usually a deal killer. That was a really good segue into the next reason not to move to Richmond. I call it unicorn hunting, and that is where you're looking for a combination of things that don't really exist or are very rare. For instance, we have a friend moving back to Richmond, and they want acres of land with a water view and high-speed internet. We told her she can have two out of the three. It's possible to find acreage with a pond or some body of water, but it won't have high-speed internet because it will have to be very far outside of Richmond. 
or she could get water views and a high-speed internet, but there won't be any acreage. Here are some other unicorns that are tough to find. Affordable water views, affordable horse farms regardless of acreage, houses with detached in-law suites, large acreage with high-speed internet, new construction without an HOA, affordable new construction, and any combination thereof. Sometimes we get a buyer that doesn't have a vehicle and they want to live in a super walkable part of town. While Richmond does have some very walkable spots in the city and elsewhere, it doesn't deliver many places where you can get away without having some type of transportation. I mean, at some point you have to go to the grocery store and you can't rely on Richmond's public transportation because that's lacking too. So unless you're okay with either walking a mile to the store or having to Instacart everything, you will be limited on your options of where you could live vehicle free. Probably the best option is the Carytown area which we did a video on, so be sure to check that one out. And we're gonna do a walkable parts of Richmond video, so stay tuned for that one in the future. If you are moving from a large city and you're used to living in a high-rise condo and you want to find the same, well, I have bad news for you. There are pretty much only three places that fit the bill. There are the condo buildings, Riverside on the James and Vista on the James, which are high-rise-ish buildings with condos and luxury penthouses. And there is Rockets Landing, which also offers condos and penthouses some of which have incredible views of the river and downtown, but I wouldn't call the buildings at Rockets Landing high rises. That is pretty much it, and you'll be at the mercy of whatever is available when you're shopping, so don't expect a ton of options. Our downtown area just isn't built that way. If you were determined to buy only a new build home, but you're on a limited budget, you won't have many options. Within a 20 mile radius of Richmond, only 37% of new construction homes fall under the $400,000 mark. Of those priced under the $400,000 mark, the average size was 2,000 square feet with three bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. Take a look at the map and notice where these new construction homes are located and where they aren't. If it's affordable new construction, then it either is on the smaller side, has some location related issue, or it's incredibly basic inside. So maybe you get new, but you won't get exciting. If you're looking for a unique style of home like modern, Spanish, Tudor, Victorian, or a Mediterranean style home, well, Richmond just doesn't deliver much on that front. Not that it's impossible, it just isn't very common. If you've watched a lot of our videos, then you know that the colonial floor plan is probably the most common house style in Richmond, and it was very popular during the mid 80s and 90s. And the newer construction communities here are pretty much all craftsmen and modern farmhouse style exteriors. So adjust your expectations accordingly. All right, so I'm about to get a little country on y'all. So let's talk about bugs and critters. In Richmond, mosquitoes are a thing. Maybe you're already used to that where you're coming from, maybe not. My blood type is delicious. So if you're like me, be aware that during the summer you will be getting bitten. There are companies that will treat your yard and they do a very good job at reducing the number of mosquitoes at your house. Now these next two issues are pretty much just for the ones that live in the more rural areas and that's ticks and snakes. In fact, I got bit by a tick while showing property out in Palatan, and I actually got Rocky Mountain spotted fever from it. The perils of real estate, but don't worry y'all, I'm gonna make it. Lastly, Virginia's home to snakes as well. It isn't unheard of to find snake skins in a crawl space during an inspection. But again, these are more country living problems than Richmond and the suburbs. These last three, I'm gonna go over really quick because I doubt they will actually deter you from moving to Richmond, but they should at least be mentioned. So first, you won't be avoiding bad drivers. It remains a mystery to those in Richmond what the left lane is actually used for, and Richmond drivers have no clue what a turn signal is. Next, during the summer, humidity is an issue. We don't have dry heat like Arizona, we have wet heat. Maybe not as bad as Florida, but 100% you'll be sweating in July and August. And lastly, we don't have a true professional sports team, which is a bummer. Richmond is big on college basketball with the VCU Rams and the University of Richmond Spiders, and there is a big rivalry between them. We do have a minor league baseball team, the Flying Squirrels, but that definitely isn't the same as a true pro sports team. Maybe in the future we'll get one. So there you have it, 14 reasons not to move to Richmond. If you have any questions, just leave a comment or reach out to us directly. I hope you found this video helpful, and if Richmond is still on your list after watching this video, be sure to reach out to us. We can help make your move stress-free and easy. We have many more great videos coming up all about living in Richmond, so you'll definitely want to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any. We also want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's reached out to us already. We appreciate your support of our business and of this channel. Thank you for being here with us today, and we'll see you next time.